Hey, 42 here. The rate of scientific discovery is getting faster and faster, with major discoveries happening every year rather than every century. Mars landings, gravitational waves, cancer treatments, vegan chili con carne, we really do seem to be able to achieve the unthinkable. But that's not to say we do it all on our own. Since the dawn of civilization, animals have been more than just our faithful companions and our delicious lunch. They have been a vital part of our understanding of how the world works and often an inspiration for how to make it a better place. So, go give Bark and Scorsese an extra cookie, let Meowly Cyrus up on the bed, and together we can learn about animals who have helped advance science. Dogs need space, lots of it. Although the Soviets may have taken this a little bit too far with the legendary dog, Laker, when they fired her out of the atmosphere and made her the first animal to orbit the Earth. Mankind has had a long history of firing animals into the sky. Since 1738, when the Montgolfier brothers sent a sheep, a duck and a rooster up in a hot air balloon. The sheep was named Mon Orsiel, which means climb to the sky. They believed the sheep to have roughly similar physiology to a human, and the duck and the rooster were control animals. This is science after all. But also because they thought it was funny to see how a sheep, a duck and a rooster get on in a hot air balloon together. This set the standard, and by the 1940s the skies were filled with balloons and rockets being tested by frogs, fruit flies, fish and monkeys among many others. It was like a Disney movie directed by Michael Bay. Laker was sent into orbit on November the 3rd, 1957, to test how both the g-force of the launch and microgravity would affect a living organism. Poor Laker just believed that someone had thrown a stick really, really far. The brave beast died within hours from overheating, but there was never any intention to bring her home, which many of the scientists say they regretted later on. If you were ever embarrassingly mugged by a sheep and had to pick one out of a police lineup, you'd probably struggle to tell the difference. This may be why the Roslyn Institute in the University of Edinburgh decided to use sheep as clone subjects. If it didn't work, they could have just grabbed any other sheep and said, look, see, they're, they're just like twins. But work it did, and Dolly the Sheep was born on 5th of July 1996. She was named Dolly since the original cell was taken from a mammary gland, which made the team think of Dolly Parton, the famously glandular singer. Like an extreme episode of the Jeremy Kyle show, Dolly had three different mothers. One gave the egg, one gave the DNA, and the final one did the whole pregnancy thing. Actually, I, I think I watched that episode last week. Although not the first cloned animal, Dolly was the first clone of an adult animal, proving that you could revert an organism back to its embryotic state. The process is called somatic cell nuclear transfer, where you take out the nucleus of a developing egg cell and put it in the nucleus of a developed adult cell. Like putting your granddad in a pair of Converse and skinny jeans and seeing if he fits in at a Skrillex concert. Thanks to Dolly, we may be able to preserve endangered species and even revive extinct ones by the process she helped to pioneer. Do you find your goldfish suspicious? Always staring at you with those goggly eyes and gormless expression? Well, it may be a Soviet spy. We've used many different beasts for spying over the centuries. Pigeons carrying messages, dogs that can sniff out weapons, and cats that are really good at hacking. Well, I assume that's why they always sit on your keyboard looking suspicious. Recently, Hamas captured an aquatic spy near the coast of the Gaza Strip. It was a dolphin. Both Israeli and Palestinian media said that Double O Dolphin was equipped with recording devices and even an arrow firing weapon. It's thought that he was there to take video of the Frogmen training facility, presumably so that they could plan an attack using a ninja octopus and a really angry seahorse. Dolphin secret agents are not a new thing though. We've been using them since the 1960s for a variety of porpoises. Purposes. Both the US and the Soviets had dolphin teams to spot underwater mines, and they still do since their echolocation is still far superior to any tech we've been able to create so far. As far as killing goes, there have been no reported incidents, but ex-Navy SEAL Brandon Webb talked in his memoir about training dolphins to headbutt enemy targets with a compressed needle which could inject lethal bubbles of CO2 into their blood. Beware the killer spy dolphins! 
The Israelis have been accused of having a whole zoo of animal agents, from masterminding the shark attack in Sharm el Sheikh to a surveillance vulture captured in Saudi Arabia. I'm looking forward to Baconborn, the swine sleeper agent. Speaking of porky animals, Ham the Chimp was another great in the story of space exploration. Ham was born in what was then the French Cameroons, but was shipped to the US at a young age to join the school for space chimps at the Holloman Air Force Base in Alamogordo, New Mexico. This was all part of Project Mercury, the NASA mission to put a human into space. On the last day of January 1961, Ham was strapped into a nappy and then into a rocket where he spent 16 minutes being successfully launched up to zero gravity and then coming back down into his capsule. He helped NASA gain valuable data about the life support systems they would use soon after for Alan Shepard, the first American and second human to enter space. But how did Ham feel about all of this? Famous primate expert Jane Goodall was highly critical of the mission and on reviewing the footage said that she had never seen a chimp look more terrified. Sergio Canavero is a maverick surgeon who has been working his way up the animal chain with the dubious aim of performing a full human head transplant. Dr. Vladimir Demikov led a lot of advancement in the field of transplanting, performing a lot of different operations in the 40s and 50s and pioneering the use of immunosuppressants so that the body would accept new body parts. And in 1959, he even transplanted a dog's head onto a new body. Neurosurgeon Robert J. White performed a successful monkey head transplant in 1970 with the animal surviving long enough to see, smell and hear the world around it. It then decided it didn't think much of the world around it and proceeded to bite people. So it's undoubtedly possible for humans, but the ethical questions it raises are pretty big. How do you define a person? Am I only me above the nipples? Above the neck? And what if the body I'm transplanted onto has a One Direction tattoo? Death would probably be a better option. Our final scientific assistant is a wee bionic beast who, like his namesake, Oscar Pistorius, bounces around on blades. Oscar lost both his back legs in a nasty accident with a combine harvester down on the Channel Island of Jersey. His owners rejected advice to have him put down, and soon they were communicating with neuroorthopedic surgeon Noel Fitzpatrick in the UK, and organising for Oscar to have specially engineered honeycomb-shaped implants that would be drilled directly into his remaining ankle bones. This technique was designed to mimic how deer antlers grow, and allow skin to grow over the point where the implant joins the body, and so to prevent infection. The whole process would probably cost around 50000 but most of that was covered by the pioneering doctors rather than the owners, and the knowledge they gained has now been used to help humans, such as a woman injured in the July 2005 London bombings. So, rather than just putting your hamster on a wheel or getting your puppy to play fetch, maybe try something a little more challenging for a change, as your pet may have the key to a cure for cancer, or they could just teach you a really useful shortcut on Microsoft Excel. Thanks for the view, subscribe for more 42. You'll probably pass by and think nothing more about it, but this is the smallest town in all of America, with a grand population of just one. There are hidden oil wells all over Los Angeles. These secret oil wells are hidden right in plain sight, some are next to schools and shopping malls, 